I'm Peter Dorday from Belfast Metropolitan College and today we're going to go through deployment using the Visual Studio 2008. Okay so I have a little sample application here which we're going to deploy. It's just a little Windows application with a couple of forms on it. So first of all what we're going to want to do is we have an overall solution here with one project on it. We're going to want to add another project which will be our deployment project. So if we right click on Solution Explorer, select Add New Project brings up the add new project dialog and on here I'll select other project types setup and deployment project and note here we have a number of different setup and deployment projects which we can create we'll just go through these first one is a standard setup project so this is the one we'll actually use for this um, deployment it's a standard MSI Windows installer deployment uh, project which uh, will create an MSI file that we can then run on the target computer which will install the application um, onto that particular target computer. Uh, we can also then remove it using the add remove programs under control panel on the target computer. We have a web setup project which is a special setup project for uh, ASP.NET web applications. It is similar to uh, a setup project except it configures um, a web server and internet information services as well um, to host our particular web application which we're deploying. We have a merge module project which a merge module project we can use if we have a shared component which may be shared amongst multiple applications. Um, a merge module project we don't actually install um, we actually add it to another setup project or a web setup project and a merge module project is just a way of packaging um, a shared component. Um, we can then add the merge module project to our setup projects and that the contents of that merge module will then be installed as part of the installation process. We've got a setup wizard which will create a setup project for us but it will base um, the uh, project on a number of questions on a, a wizard type that we answer and then our setup project will be configured. We've got a CAB project which just uh, is a way of creating a CAB file which is uh, a compressed file that we can use to store files on the internet and, and download them from the net. Our smart device CAB project which is one that we can use for um, mobile applications um, for mobile devices. I'm going to create a setup project here. I'm going to give it a little name. Um, let's just call it install golf. And the project location will just leave as default. Click OK and you notice after a second in Solution Explorer we've got a new project here called Install Golf. Now our uh, deployment project or our setup project is made up of a number of different editors um, to define what happens on the target computer whenever the setup is actually run. First thing we initially see here is our file system editor. So this file system editor uh, allows us to define exactly what happens on the target file system on the computer that the setup project is actually run on. So we see we've got a number of different uh, locations here that we can modify. Things like the application folder, so that will be usually C program files, then the manufacturer name and the product name folder. Um, we've got the desktop, so the user's desktop and the user's program menu. So what we'll do is the application folder will contain all the files needed for the application. So it's assembly, it's .exe file and any other files needed. And we'll then create shortcuts and add those to the desktop and the user's programs menu as well. We'll come back and do that in a second. All the editors can be uh, flicked through um, in Solution Explorer up, up here. So the first one we've seen now, the file system editor. The next one across is a registry editor. So this allows us to uh, configure registry keys on the computer that the setup has been run on. So if our application uses a registry to store information, we can create those registry keys as part of the installation process and set their values. Next one across is the file types editor. So file types editor allows us to configure um, that a certain uh, file extension, maybe a .doc file or .txt file, is going to be associated with this application. So what that means is whenever we click on a a text file, a .txt file, it would be opened up with our application. We've also got the user interface editor. So the user interface editor allows us to configure the install steps that are presented to the user on screen. The user interface editor is actually made up of two uh, installs. We've got a normal install and we've got an administrative install. So our normal install is, is uh, what we would see whenever we just double click on the uh, MSI file and run through it. And the administrative install is whenever we use the command prompt and run it in admin mode. So we'll actually come back to this and we'll add in a couple of extra screens. But by default you see here we've got a little welcome screen. We've got an installation folder. So what, what folder uh, 
we're allowing the user to choose what folder the actual files will be installed to and then a confirm installation and a little progress bar will come up followed by the finish screen and that will be our setup finished. We also have the custom act customs actions editor which will allow us to run uh, custom classes uh, that are installer classes which will allow us to perform advanced installation functionality things like configuring performance counters um, and so on that, that we can actually run code that actually performs functionality as during the actual setup process so a little piece of code could be doing anything creating files and so on and so forth temporary files that are needed Finally, we have the launch conditions editor, which the launch conditions editor allows us to um, have launch conditions um, on the launch of our setup. So this could be that you maybe want to search the file system for a specified file. So it may be that the uh, existence of an existing version of your application exists, or that a certain file exists, or a certain database file could exist. For things like web applications as well, you can search, have a launch condition so that uh, the uh, Adrenaline information services is already installed on that computer. But what we'll do first of all is, is we'll go back to the file system editor and we will actually uh, start configuring our, our, our setup project. So what we'll want to do is to the actual application folder we will want to add the generated output from our Golf Academy project here. So whenever we build our Golf Academy project we will have um, a, an assembly generated so it'll be called Golf, Golf Academy.exe so what we'd like to do is in the application folder we'll actually put the uh, generated assembly in there. There's an easy way of doing that and just right click an application folder specify add and we've got the option here add project output we can also add a new folder if we wish to or we can just add one file or one particular assembly but because the, uh, the, the application that we're wishing to install is part of the same solution as our installation project we will add the project output from another project in the solution so here we've got a list of our projects. So we only have one other project in our solution here called Golf Academy. And what I can do is I'll add the primary output. So the primary output will be our generated assembly. We may want to add content files as well. So we could have maybe XML files um, or text files that are used um, by our particular application. And we may wish to add those as well. Or documentation files. Or we could actually add the C sharp source files as well if we wanted to. But here we're just going to um, add the primary output. Notice as well as you select the particular output that you like, there is a little description describing that here. Um, and it's also uh, worth noting here it asks us which configuration um, of the primary output do we want. Do we want the debug release or do we want the actual release version of that? And we'll come back to that in a little, little second. We'll just specify active here, which will pick up whatever uh, configuration our particular Golf Academy project is configured with currently. So we're going to add the primary output. And notice we've got here primary, out primary output from Golf Academy. So in essence, that's going to be our, our Golf Academy.exe file. It's going to be installed in the application folder. So what we'll also do for handiness is we'll create a little shortcut to this um, output. Uh, and stick that on the user's desktop and on the user's programs menu. In order to do that, if I right click on that, I can create a shortcut. Create a shortcut that lasts us for a name, so we'll just call it Golf Application. And then what I can do is I'll just drag that over and put it on the user's desktop um, so that whenever this is run, there'll be a little shortcut to uh, that on the user's desktop. I could also add uh, it to the user's programs menu as well. I can create a, another shortcut. And we'll just add that onto the programs menu. So that's our, our file system and the target machine configured. This application doesn't use the registry, um, but in order to uh, configure registry keys, it's pretty similar. Um, with no special launch conditions um, or with no uh, special install installers here so we don't need to do that. Now what I can also do is if I select the actual install project in Solution Explorer this has got a number of properties and um, we'll just make this slightly bigger to make it easier to view and we'll sort the made Z. So properties such as the author of this so we'll call this and the description so it's just going to be a little um, golf scorecard
We've got the option here of whether this, whenever this install runs, whether or not it's installing for all users or just the current user. Uh, we'll specify that it um, installs for all users. We can give the manufacturer as well. We can give a, a web address for the manufacturer. And the actual product name itself, so we'll call that golf application. And the particular version of it here, we'll just leave it at version 1. What we will do though is we'll add a little screen under the user interface which will be a little license agreement and the user will have to select that they either agree to the license agreement uh, that or will have to select that they have that they agree to the license agreement in order to continue the installation. If they don't agree then the installation will be cancelled. In order to add another screen, I can just right click um, on the printer node that I want to add the screen into. So it's going to be within this, the start element. So before everything kicks off, we'll add it um, after the welcome screen and before the uh, installation folder dialog. Right click and do add dialog. We've got a number of different ones here so we can present the user with uh, various user interface elements allowing them to make selections using maybe radio buttons or check boxes um, or a little read me. But what I'm going to do is add a little license agreement dialog box here. Click OK and you see we've got a license agreement here. I'm going to drag that up and we'll have it just after the welcome screen. And We've got our uh, little property here of that particular user interface element called the license file, which will be the text file that contains the license information. So what I need to do first of all is add that file on the file system on the target machine. So in the application folder, I'm going to add a file, and that file. is just a little text file that I have. Which is called license.txt. So that's going to be added in there. So if I now flick back to our user interface editor, select the license agreement, select the license file, browse, By default, it defaults to RTF files there, but we can select any type of file that we wish. And that means now we've got a little license agreement coming up on screen whenever, um, as part of the installation process. What I will want to do before I actually build the install project and create the MSI file, is I want to actually change the build mode of our application that we're installing to release mode. So whenever we actually build an application, the, uh, there's two different methods of build. It can either be built in release mode or debug mode. Building an application in debug mode, which is the default, will build the application and include um, debug symbols so it can be debugged within the Visual Studio um, debugger. Building it in release mode will remove those and your application will run slightly faster and is more optimized. In order to change the build mode of your project, you go into the project properties. On the build tab, which is currently selected here, and we change the configuration, so we'll change it to release mode. Close that. Now whenever our application is built, it's going to be built in release mode. So if I just build it there. And the build succeeded. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to build our installer. So it's gone off, it's doing the build process, it's creating an MSI file called installgolf.msi. So the MSI file will be named the same as your, uh, your setup project. And we see here that it's been succeeded and it's packaged two files within it, golfacademy.exe which is a primary output from our Golf Academy application and also license.txt which is our, our, our license file which we're using in the license agreement page. Now if I navigate to the directory, the project directory for our setup project. Which is install golf, and I haven't. I've only built this in debug mode at the minute. Our actual setup project. I can change the properties of that to build and release mode as well. 
But if we go into the uh, the build folder, we, you see we've, we've got two little files here. We've got install golf um, .msa and setup .exe. So we've got an MSA Windows installer file which we can run. If I just close Visual Studio here in the meantime, and if I run install golf, our Windows installer kicks in and it kicks off the installation for a golf application. Now in the uh, setup project, it was, uh, we can also specify a, a bitmap banner which will change this little um, area here to that little bitmap. So if you want to have your own graphic at the top here, you can. So first of all, we've got a welcome screen. Next, we've got a license agreement, um, which is an empty text file we had there. But I can, if I don't specify I agree, we can't continue. But if I specify I agree and click next, um, it asks for the Fitler installation folder that we want. So by default, it's going to default your program files, the vendor of the application, and then the name of the application below that. And you can specify whether it's installed just for me or everyone. So remember we changed the project properties there that it is going to be installed for everyone by default. So that means all users of this computer will have access to this application and it will be on their desktop and on their start menu. So if we just fire off through the installation, this is a progress screen, give it a couple of seconds. It's not a very complex application, so, so it shouldn't take too long. So it's just going through the installation process now by creating that folder for the vendor and the subfolder for the application within the program files. Uh, folder on the, the system drive and it's adding a shortcut to the desktop and a shortcut to the uh, the application on the user start menu and it's funny there and it's come up application complete or installation complete sorry click and close if I just minimize down this we'll see we've got a little shortcut now on our desktop to golf application we can of course whenever we were setting up their application we'll load up which it does so and it works fully we can go through make a booking um, after we've made a booking, we can then enter the scores and so on. I won't go through all that because it'll take a bit of time. We can close that all down and if we open up the start menu, you should see on the start menu there's a golf application as well. I'll shortcut to that. I could of course on the, using the file systems editor um, created a folder on the start menu for that but here we've just added onto the, the uh, root of the start menu and again that launches up fine. Using the Windows Installer project as well, what what that allows us to do is have uh, it will uninstall itself for us. Um, but first of all, actually, I'll just show you the file system on the machine that the installation was run on. So we're going to the Program Files folder, and you see we've got a BMC folder here, which is the uh, the name of the vendor um, property on the uh, installation project. We've got a Golf Application folder. And in that we've got the primary output which is golfacademy.exe and that license.txt file which is a little text file of the license agreement which is currently empty. But if we close that and go into control panel and if we go into programs, uninstall a program, we should see our golf program listed in here. Just give it a little second just to go through all the programs here and list everything up on screen. And here we have golf, golf application. So what I can do is uninstall that or kick off the uninstaller. And it prompts us, are we sure we want to uninstall a golf application? Yes, we will. So the Windows Installer kicks off and it undoes what it done in the installation. So it'll remove those folders and files added to the file system. It'll remove the registry keys and so on um, if we were adding registry keys on as part of the installation process. So just give it a little second to uninstall itself and then we'll notice that all the files have all gone. And that's it now finished. Notice that on our desktop the shortcut has now vanished. On our start menu the shortcut has also vanished. And if we go back into the file system and go to our program files folder. We have no BMC folder anymore because there's no other BMC applications on there. And that's it finished.